In this video, we're gonna talk about all of the new generative AI updates inside Adobe Premiere. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. All right, I'm here with Megan from Adobe. Megan, good to see you. Thanks, good to uh, see you. Thanks so, for being here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. So we got some updates today and some theoretical updates in the future, but let's talk about what uh, is released now in Adobe Premiere. Uh, today, and then we can go from there. Yeah, so coming very soon, like early May, uh, we have a slew of new features coming to Premiere Pro. First and foremost, you know, we're still very, very focused on performance. And so we're excited that we have performance updates across different workflows in Premiere Pro. For example, um, GPU accelerated uh, transcription and speech to text is 15 to 20 times faster because of that GPU acceleration. Um, we also have GPU accelerated encode for ProRes. Um, so we have a lot of updates that just make things faster or smoother inside Premiere Pro. Um, and then we also, all of the really fun audio features that we talked about earlier this year are now going into release. So interactive fade handles, dynamic waveforms, new clip colors, as well as AI-powered audio category tagging. So the ability to see if something's dialogue, music, sound That's effects. just by looking at the audio and it's kind of figuring out what is this? Exactly. So AI looks at the audio and defines what type of audio it is. And then it adds a badge right on the timeline that says, okay, this is dialogue. And when you click on that badge, it opens the essential sound panel. And in the essential sound panel are all the most relevant tools for that audio type, right? So people who don't know audio that well know like, okay, I'm working with dialogue. Here's all the tools that are really going to make my dialogue sound great or music or ambient, what have you. Yeah. Like using the enhance tool for dialogue. To yes. The, and enhance speech went in earlier this year, yeah. which is right there in the essential we sound. We've been using that now. extensively for these interviews because <laughs> it bet. is a very noisy area. I bet. Yeah, it's like magic up. for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, and now let's talk about Gen AI. I, tease some things that are coming. So tell me about the three uh, the three main features that you've been talking about. Yeah, so you know, Adobe and Premiere Pro has a long history of AI features. We've had features in the product for a long time, but now we're diving into generative AI. And in the way that we've always been dedicated to the creator and making sure that we're really empowering creative workflows, we think that these first three features that we were, we're committing to by the end of the year are really gonna unlock and, and just take the blockers out of editorial workflows. So first is we have object addition and object removal, which are pretty self-explanatory. You know, the ability to, you know, mask something out or add something back in. If you have a, a sort of a wide open space in your talking head interview that you wanna add a visual interest or you wanna remove a bunch of pedestrians from a scene that's meant to be, you know, high intensity that you don't want all these like random people around. Um, and then the third is generative extend, which is actually the one that I'm the most excited about because I uh, come from editorial. I worked as an editor for many years and literally every editor can relate to that point where you go to put a transition between two clips and you have insufficient media. And you're just like, oh God, if I just had a Let few Let me slow this down. How slow can I make this? So I have enough handles. Yes, or you, you know, you somebody that you're you're showing an interview and you have this very poignant point, but you don't have that second of right. breathing Give room to really yeah. have that pacing. And so generative extend just allows you to pull out the end of a clip, a few frames, if not a few seconds, to really hit your pacing or give you the ability to add that transition or dip to black where you want to. Is there any control over that? I mean, is it just sort of like holding the frame a little bit longer? Is it like, well, it's if a, there's movement happening, is it sort of like figuring out what that is to just extend it? How's, yeah, how's it figuring out what to add? As you can imagine, it's because it's generative AI, it's based on the frames before it. So the model is gonna look at what was happening just before or just after this. So it's gonna be the ability to pull out the front of the clip as well and use that information to then drive a model to create the subsequent frames or seconds of video. And is it similar with Firefly where can you steer it at all or is it just gonna be what, like, what it figures is the best output? Yeah, well there are gonna be um, ability to iterate between the, the details of it are yet to be, to you know, that we're yet to Releases, be speaking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then going back to the, uh, the fill and the removal, are there certain types of shots that this seems to work better in? Like if it's more static shots, uh, kind of like, I know also again, caveat that it's not out yet, but um, 
what in testing have you kind of seen like that it works best on what kind of shots? Well, the thing that's really surfaced for us in developing this is is the the need to really think about our masking and tracking tools as well. So that's been one of the first questions that people have asked is like, wait, so I see that you're doing this, but then what are you doing about the masking and tracking that's existing in Premiere Pro? And the answer is yes, we are addressing masking and tracking both the existing workflows that are in Premiere Pro right now, but also a smart masking, a gen, you know, an AI powered masking that will help. It's not just about static frames, the video, the, the power of video movement, is yeah, movement, so. right? And so we really are looking at how we can leverage all of the tools existing in Premiere Pro to make it the best experience. I was wondering, I was wondering in the demo, because I think it was a race example. It was like a racing an electrical box or something. But if it was the opposite where you like wanted to add a box, you think you have the movement, so like, how does it handle the the shifting of the angles? Yeah, I mean, we're we're gonna have to see how the models all you know come out. And the the really exciting thing that also came out today is that it's not just about necessarily one model. Not just right. right. So, yeah. so we have entered into early explorations with our friends over at OpenAI, Runway, and Pika Labs to give users the choice of which AI model they're using so that if, you know, certain use cases, certain models may get there faster or they may, you know, people have the choice to say, you know, I really want to choose Firefly because I want to make sure I'm, I'm commercially safe. I want to make sure that what I'm putting in here, I can, you know, put to a client and know that they're safe to put it into their, you know, public sphere. Commercially publish or but, right up, yeah. but it may be that, you know, they look at a, runway, for example, and say, you know, this model is actually looking better in terms of what I'm wanting it to do. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. And yeah, what was the thought process behind opening up the model? Because I feel like a lot of tools that are introducing AI, it's either a little bit secretive about what the model is, or it's using an existing model from another company, and it's just a wrapper around an API. So it's rare that like the other companies kind of be like, here, choose your model. So what was the thought process behind that? The reality is, is that a, the power of an Adobe post-production workflow is our ecosystem. We, it is not something new. We have hundreds and hundreds of partners that we work with to really enable users to choose the workflows that work the best for them. And that's not going to be a one size fits all. And so as we start looking into generative AI, we realize that the AI models are the same way, that certain models are going to be better for certain things. People are going to have a reason that they're going to want to choose one over the other. And we want to give users those choices. Yeah. Content authentication, or you have a name for it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of AI, authenticating or labeling content, content, content authenticity initiative. Content authenticity. Yes. Um, so yeah, can you tell me more about what that is? Yeah. So Adobe was one of the co-founders of the content authenticity initiative, which started in 2019, and it's basically a group of organization technologists um, that have come together, and now we're nearly 3,000 organizations that are a part of it, to say we are committed to ethical AI. We are committed to having transparency in where and when AI is being used. And so when these new generative AI features go into Premiere Pro, they will be backed by content credentials. So you'll be able to go in and see anything that's exported from Premiere Pro that has used AI, you'll be able to see like, this was altered so using AI. Like in the metadata in these files, exactly. that export is like, yeah. hey, some of these files, something was generated in here. Correct. And there's so many different organizations that are part of Content Authenticity Initiative, which is really the power of it. Because you know, just recently Google and Meta joined, and it really shows that like if we are all committing to doing this the right way, the ethical way, then viewers, audiences can have the confidence to know what's real and what's been altered. Well, excited about all the updates, Megan. Thanks yeah, a lot for that. No problem. Thank Appreciate you for it. being here. And that is it for this episode. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.